All right. So uh, I want to thank everybody for taking a few minutes out to join us on this week's 15-minute uh, feature Friday. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the virtual inputs on access cameras and how we can uh, utilize them uh, within Smart Client. Now, I'm going to give full credit to uh, support team who wrote a knowledge base article on this last year uh, when support for virtual inputs were added in in Device Pack 96A. Um, and they have a, a step by step guide on how to uh, utilize or at least configure them on, let's say, the older version of Access cameras or the older uh, user interface. So today we're going to follow those steps, but on the newer interface, but then take it a step further and actually incorporate them into smart client so a uh, quick uh, update on uh, compatibility um, these are there is a difference when you're using um, c code versus professional express uh, previous versions um, in c code you will see uh, you'll get a dynamically acquired uh, dynamically acquired uh, virtual inputs. Typically, you'll see them flood in as 32 inputs uh, when, using, when using those uh, drivers on the right-hand side. Um, apparently, in the older version of the software or the e-code, um, it's one driver or one output that will show up. Okay, but that's enough with PowerPoint. Let's actually dive into the system. So, to show you at least in management client what we are referring to is, uh, let's bring up this camera here. So you can see we've got 32 outputs that have been added into the system when this camera was brought in, the 2026. And you can tell that these are virtual inputs by selecting on one, heading to settings, and you'll actually see uh, the word virtual with a uh, number beside it. And that corresponds to the input on the camera. So we'll have 32 of them for this camera. Now, cameras that have actual inputs, you'll see this one now counts to 34 because the first two are um, inputs on the camera. And you'll actually see that designation as a real input. Uh, the only other setting that you have here is the trigger interval. So you can activate this trigger and it will last as long as that interval up to 10 seconds, but half second is where it's set. Or this other option is you can activate the input until the input is deactivated. Okay. Uh, so this is actually where we're going to start our testing. But in order to actually start using this, we're actually going to configure this in the camera first. So let's bring up my access camera, go into settings. Um, so in the new user interface, you're going to find the events under system. And you'll see an events app here. So what we are configuring is an action rule. And I've actually got one already created. Let me remove that and we'll create it again. Now this interface is identical between the older uh, uh, software on the access cameras and the newer ones. Here it's going to be identical. So here we're going to create a new rule and this rule is going to activate night mode. Now this is where we select the trigger and there is a little bit of a, a, a nomenclature where on the camera it's, uh, it's called an input where we call it an output um, in the software. The way, easiest way to remember is we are outputting a signal from milestone that's being received on the camera, so it would be an input. So we'll change manual trigger to a virtual input and use the designation of one. And then the actual event, what we're going to do is alter day and night vision mode. So when active, uh, that input is going to go into night mode. When it's inactive, it'll revert back to day mode. So we'll click OK to save that. And we can actually begin that testing while we've got the camera display up. So we are on virtual input one of the camera. And when I activate this mode here in the management client, we'll see that the camera now reverts to night mode and the IR illuminators uh, turn on. And then we can deactivate here. The signal gets sent and the camera responds. So this is utilizing the management client 
to make this change, but now we're going to take that a step further and do this inside of the smart client. So to prepare for that, we're going to first create a user-defined input. Now I've already created these, but let's go ahead and create them from brand new. So a new user input, this is my 2026 night mode. And because I want to be able to toggle uh, that night mode on and off, I'm going to add in another event to act as an event to deactivate the night mode. All right, so now that we have our events, the next step is to write a rule. So let's go ahead and create a new rule, which is, we'll call it night mode, and this will trigger on an event, which is going to be the user-defined event that we just created. We'll let this happen at any given time. And the trigger that we're looking for is set device output to a state. So the state is going to be activated and the device is going to be the selected device. So you can see here, you can, uh, you can use this to trigger multiple cameras or multiple outputs at the same time. But for today's session, we'll just use virtual output one. All right, now we are, because I said we're gonna toggle this in the smart client, we are gonna add an end event, which is going to be our day mode option. And we're going to change that device state back. And you can see it's already picked it up and put in the details that we need to. All right, so from the uh, management client, we are now ready to go. So let's bring up our smart client and add in these settings here. So we'll go into setup mode, go to our events, and we will throw night mode on. Rename that to just... Night mode. And now that we want to be able to toggle, let's put our day mode in here as well. Hey, Alex, I'm just going to jump in here. These sure. might be your old user defined events before you deleted them and recreated them. That is a very good point. And I appreciate Stephen for reminding me before I fall flat on my face instead of just letting me do it. There we go. And we'll get day mode here as well. So now that we've got these obtusely large buttons put on the display so they're easy to see, uh, these are now overlay buttons which should activate the exact same event that we've configured. So we can see by clicking it, we'll go into night mode and then revert back to day mode. All right, um, I will open the floor up for any questions, comments, concerns. And I'm just reading. So I, I can speak to what I what I wrote there. So um, one of the things I was playing with with the PowerShell stuff is uh, I can activate a user defined event from PowerShell and supply a camera ID, and uh, and then create a rule so that um, the the device uh, from metadata can be used. So you can have one user defined event, um, and you can use that with one rule to perform a lot of different or perform actions on a lot of different cameras. So that can be handy, but you can't do that from the, the small client button, of course. Well, that's good to know. I will admit I uh, wasn't aware of that. Um, looks like we have another topic for Josh. When you uh, want to do a 15-minute feature Friday, you can walk us through that. Yeah, Jared set me up to do, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Lego. Uh, I think it's next week or something. Sounds good. All right, any other questions, comments? All right, looks like we came in under time. 
Um, so I will, uh, oh, somebody else is writing something. I have a question for you while we're waiting sure. for Jacob to write his question. So can you go back and explain how you know which ones are the, I, I, uh, which ones are the virtual ones and which are the real ones? Because I thought you said the first one was the first two are real and the other 32. Yeah, were... I jumped between cameras. So on the ah. 2026, they only have virtual and it indicates virtual here. But on my F41, it has two real, um, it has two uh, physical uh, inputs and outputs on the base station. So they'll actually designate as a real output here. So the first virtual uh, usable uh, virtual input would actually be output number three. Got it. That sleight of hand threw me off on the roll. Cool. Uh, Jacob asks, what are some of the other options in the drop down menu? Yeah, this differs from camera to camera in this guy here. If we open this action rule again, and let's say we go to add another one, there are quite a number of options in this camera. I've seen in a few other ones that I don't have connected now, you can toggle the external LEDs on or off, but this one has the wide dynamic range mode, um, sending in SNMP traps, sending images, uh, forcibly recording on the camera itself. Um, the overlay text is one that I have played around with quite a bit and I've never gotten that one to work, um, but this one will also turn on the uh, IR illumination as well. So these are all options that um, could technically be triggered by uh, any one of those 32 uh, virtual inputs. All right, any other questions? Oh, and yeah, and I think the autofocus was actually, they've added that via the, um, the Axis uh, plugin for the autofocus. Yeah, that's part of the uh, the X Protect Optimizer thing, adds a, a little button on the, when you hover over camera, adds a little button to trigger autofocus. Is that on the management client or the smart client? I haven't seen that before. It's, uh, it's in the smart client. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, I think we'll end it there. Um, I'd like to, again, thank everybody for taking the few minutes out of their day to join us. And I hope everybody has a, a great weekend.